Hi guys, welcome to this video. Uh, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make these cool sci-fi glowing cables. So as you can see, um, it's a pretty cool effect. I've been doing this as part of a little animation I've been working on that I've just got a few more tweaks to do. But there's a couple of things in this animation that I kind of want to do a couple of tutorials on that um, I think are pretty cool. Uh, these The cables being one of them. So let's just jump into it. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new scene. Um, get rid of the default cube, get rid of the light. Um, we'll keep the camera. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is shift A, mesh, and add in a plane. I'm just going to scale that up with, uh, by pressing S and then 4 on the number pad. Uh, the first thing we want to do is have some cables to have this effect on. Uh, the easiest way to do that is if we press Shift A um, and then add in a curve bezier and then if we go into edit mode on this curve and then whilst in edit mode if you highlight everything with A and then press X to delete the vertices and then what you're going to want to do is we press 7 to go into the top view, come over here to the draw line and then you can just freehand draw these cables. So as you can see, you can just draw, you get a nice curve. Um, what I had in that other video is I've got like a circle kind of containment unit in the middle. And then I just drew just a bunch of cables kind of like come in every sort of which way into the uh, center. So once you've got your curves, um, I'm just gonna make this slightly more interesting and put a, just put something in the middle. There we go, so we've just got like a little bit of a, a thing in the middle. Um, just going to select this uh, curve and bring it over. Uh, there's a couple of these for some reason didn't quite make it into the middle. Uh, what you're going to want is if you, the, whichever way the arrows are pointing, that's the way that the energy pulse is going to uh, travel. Hello, we're just quickly jumping in from the future. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, you need to make sure these arrows are evenly spaced because where they're bunched, that'll affect the speed that the actual pulse is moving along the cable. Um, so you'll see that it'll be quite like slow here, and then suddenly it'll be really fast here, and then it'll slow down again. Um, the way you want to do that is just if you grab the vertices as, after you've drawn the line, um, and just play with them or delete them or whatever, just so you can get uh, the arrows kind of pointing in the right direction and evenly spaced. Okay, back to the video. So some of these go in the wrong way, just delete those, uh, this is fine. And then you're going to come over to the curve properties here and then just give them um, under bevel just a little bit of depth to get kind of the cable look. Okay, so now you can see that we've got some cables just going into this central uh, unit that I've built. Okay, so if we go over to uh, jump over to Eevee into rendered mode um, just for the time being I'm just going to quickly add uh, just a sunlight just so I can see what I'm doing um, just add in contact shadows to give it a bit of depth and then to really see this effect in Eevee you need to enable bloom and uh, ambient occlusion and I'm just going to drop the world background to completely black just so we can really see the effect uh, and then we need to work on the shader. So if we swap over to the shader tab here. Okay, so what we want to do to build this uh, shader is hit new. Um, and then we can delete the principled BSDF because we won't be needing that. Um, so the main sort of like the actual glowing pulse effect of this was uh, something I learned in a default cube tutorial, which I'll link below if you want to check that out. But to get started, uh, what we need is we need a uh, texture coordinate. node. So we're going to shift A, texture coordinates. And then we want a separate X, Y, and Z node. And then we're going to want a uh, two maths nodes. So we'll press to get the add node, copy that. This one we want to change to fraction. And this one we want to be add. And then we put the UV into the vector here. Um, X into the X into the top value of this add node. Plus plug this in here to there um, and then we're going to want a color ramp which controls the color of our energy pulse and then we want um, an emission shader just for now and um, we'll plug the color into the color put this about five 
plug this into the surface of that node. And now you can see this color ramp is kind of controlling the glow here. Um, what you want to do, because obviously there's a harsh divide, is we need to have black on both ends, and that means that there'll be no glow uh, where it's black. Uh, that's not 100%. And then if we add in a color in the middle, for example, uh, go for a nice pink, and then we really want to pull this in, uh, pull the black in, just so it's nice and close to the middle, because we want it to be sort of a pulse, right? Um, what I did on the other shader is I actually made two of the pinks and then I put another one right in the middle and had this to be a pinky white just to like really sell kind of like the middle um, to show that it's really big, uh, really strong sort of like bright energy pulse and we want to get these as, sort of as tight as you want them really um, okay, so you can see that they are kind of glowing here. What we want them to do is we want them to travel down the length of the cable. Um, and the way we do that is we use a driver in this add node. So if we click into value here, and you're going to want to type ha uh, hash frame, and then uh, divide this by a number such as 100. And you see that this goes pink. And now if we get a timeline up, you see that as we go along the timeline, it kind of it pulses out from the middle. This is going the wrong direction. So for some reason, it travels uh, against the arrows, uh, against the way of the flow of the arrows. If we go back into the curve, you can see the arrows are going this way. Um, for some reason, they go backwards along them. So easy fix. We just add an invert node and just drop it in between the X, Y, and Z. So now you'll see that the travel along the length of the cable into the middle of this kind of machine I've made. And that's kind of it for the actual like pulse in shader bringing everything into the middle. Um, if we kind of drop the strength of this light and maybe bump up the intensity of the bloom. So you see it's got like a nice kind of glow to it as it, as it goes along. Um, but the other part of this shader um, is that if we bring the light back up so currently uh, the cable is just light and then pure black and obviously cables aren't just pure black like this uh, they have a bit of kind of roughness and texture to them that's where the next part of the shader sort of like plays its mark um, okay so we want to build a shader that applies only to the bit that isn't lit up um, and that's quite easy to do so first thing we want to do is we want to copy this uh, texture coordinate node and then plug this into a mapping node and then for this one we want to put the object into the vector and then from there we need to get a musgrave texture plug the vector into the musgrave and then we want a color ramp um, and this is going to control kind of the roughness of the cable and give it a bit of variety. Uh, the textures just to break that up and you'll, you'll see what I mean in just a second. So if we drag in the height of the Musgrave into the color ramp and then add in a principled VSDF shader and then put the color ramp into the roughness and then pick a kind of darkish kind of gray for the uh, cable. And then if we just control shift and click on the principled BSDF shader, which allows you to view it if you've got the Node Wrangler add-on, uh, which you can enable in Edit Preferences, Add-ons, and just search for Node Wrangler. Um, just check that, and then that means that you can Control Shift and click on any of these textures and kind of get a final outcome. And actually, we'll Control Shift and click on this color ramp to sort of view what the roughness map's doing. So the way this works is anything that's black will be completely shiny, and anything that's white won't have any sort of reflection at all. Um, the cable, we don't want it to be completely shiny because um, cables are kind of the rubber, they have some sort of reflection but not a huge amount. So if we bring that black just in a little bit and the white in, and then for this black, if we just raise it up to kind of a grey kind of off-white and then that should be fine for the white. 
uh, and then control shift click on this principal BSDF again, uh, you'll see that where the light's hitting it, like here, um, it's very shiny and then there's dull and shiny parts and that's just adds a bit of grime. Uh, to really sell that, we can, if we reduce the dimension on the Musgrave texture and then bring up the detail, you'll see that suddenly we get this kind of like grungy look, which, uh, which is really cool. Um, you can kind of play with these to get something that you, you really kind of want. Um, I like it when it's quite contrasty like that. So you see now that all along this cable, uh, wherever the light is hitting it, you see you get this cool sort of uh, reflection uh, on it. So now what we need to combine this plus the glowing one uh, to really sort of sell the effect of the glowing cable. So what we need to do is we need to press Shift A and add in a mix shader. And just drop that here. If we control shift click that just so it's the uh, then we want to drag the glowing shader into the uh, shader tab at the bottom and then we want to put the principal BSDF in the top. And you see this is mixing them sort of 50%. So if we go all the way to here, it's just gonna be the top shader, and if we go all the way to one, it's just gonna be this bottom shader. What we want is we need to sort of take this information and then plug it into the mix factor and it'll kind of tell it like where this isn't pink or white and it's just black then we need to apply this top shader uh, so what we can do is we can drag the color of this uh, color ramp into the factor of the mix shader and then if we add in a another uh, no sorry not a color we can add in a hue and saturation node and then just drop that drop the saturation to zero and that gets us this black and white texture. You could probably do the same with a color ramp as well, but this is the way I did it and it worked fine. Um, so now you can see that wherever it's white, it'll be this bottom shader and wherever it's black, it'll be the top shader. So we go to material output now um, and just view this last sort of mix shader. And then if we just scrub along to the kind of in the middle somewhere. So now you see that we have this cable reflection from the top shader and then we've got the glowing shader as well here. And I mean, that's pretty much it. You can, this shader, uh, I'll put it up on screen here. Um, this shader can be applied in quite a few ways. Um, so I think you've got the cables, uh, we can, you can have it so a light's moving uh, behind some text, for example. Here's a video I made uh, when I first watched that last tutorial just to try it out. Um, in this sense, the whole cable's glowing and kind of a pulse comes along it. Um, and this was rendered in cycles, and you can see in cycles that it actually casts light on the background, which is really cool. Uh, you don't get that in Eevee, but that's what the bloom's for. Uh, the bloom setting kind of just helps uh, sell it a little bit more. But yeah, you can see this is a really cool shader to get this cool kind of uh, effect of these pulse and energy cables coming into like one sort of central area. So the next tutorial I'm gonna do is to get this um, scrolling text on the computer monitor. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe. And if you like this video, hit the like button, uh, it really helps. Uh, once I've finished this containment kind of animation, the project files will be going on the Patreon. So if you wanna learn, learn more about that, you can go to the link in the description. But yeah, that's it, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.